Welcome back. Now, Joburgers are still reeling from a deadly downtown fire. Over 70 were killed when what is believed to be a hijacked building went up in flames. Police are investigating the cause of the fire while an inquiry is being set up to look into abandoned buildings. Let's take you live now to ENCA's Heidi Jokos, who's been following the case uh, since yesterday morning. She was, in fact, the first reporter who arrived on scene for ENCA yesterday around 5 a.m. Uh, Heidi, I know that you've spoken to many others of our colleagues throughout the course of the day, but I'm interested to know from you uh, what difference you're seeing from when you arrived yesterday and left the scene in the afternoon and when you arrived this morning. Uh, yes, Masako, I would say that it's a, a very uh, different picture because I think yesterday through all the panic and all officials and uh, people coming to look what was going on, media, it was very difficult to look at the extent of the damage and what was really going on here. Uh, having taken a walk earlier this morning uh, with my colleague Asanda, uh, Joko Mane, as well as Linde, we really got to go all the way around to look at the actual um, building and the extent of the building. It looks like a very large building, a lot bigger than what I had expected it to be, especially from yesterday. We only saw one section of it because obviously it was very, uh, it was all cornered off. But this fire must have been extensive, Masako, especially if you have over 70 people that now have uh, tragically lost their lives and people really burnt beyond recognition. Uh, I think there, there's a, a, a huge tragedy in that because families will obviously not be able to identify their loved ones and there's going to be an extensive process for that to unfold. Um, I was hoping to get the MEC for health uh, to just get a clearer perspective on the status of those that have been um, that have been uh, hospitalized. We are hearing that some are in very critical condition. So I was hoping to get uh, just some report on that, but uh, we'll hopefully get her sooner um, rather than later. But it is a very different picture. And I think what was also a little bit alarming was that you had forensics back here today. We still haven't received an update in terms of whether or not any more bodies have been retrieved or recovered or whether or not it's just body parts. And we have heard from the health department that it could likely be that because uh, of the extent of the fire. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, in fires and in situations like this, people get burnt and, and sometimes when recovering bodies, uh, not the whole body is retrieved. It's, it's a very gruesome picture to even imagine, but that might be the reality of what's possibly happened here. I don't see pathologists anymore, but we, there's been very strict instructions not to move into that area. So that might be the case that they are still uh, trying to move in. But um, really, I, I've never in my, my career as a journalist covered anything as horrific as this. Um, we cover a lot of hectic stuff, Masejo, but this has been uh, very, very intense and very traumatic, even just speaking to people that survived, the extreme measures that they had to go to, to try and get out of the building, jumping out of the building, throwing kids out of the building, just any means to try and survive. And Heidi, tell me about uh, those who um, those who were former residents in that particular building uh, who came back today to try and gain access. I, I, I heard uh, those reports here on channel that there were some who wanted to gain access into the building, saying that they think they can still, uh, you know, get some of their belongings, etc. But I understand that this building obviously is not safe at the moment. Yes, exactly. It's definitely not safe. People are trying to come back in to get any sort of uh, belongings, documentation, and uh, there's a huge risk because the integrity of this building is in question given the fire. But um, I am joined by the MEC of Health uh, in Kharteng just to get perspective on the status of what's actually going on in our hospitals and in our uh, mortuaries. Thank you so much for your time, MEC. Uh, maybe just give us an overview on what's actually going on. There was some confusion this morning around where family members can go to identify bodies. Maybe just give us an update on where we are at. Okay. The family members must go to Deep Kloof Mortuary to identify their bodies. We've only used one mortuary in the province because it's got the capacity and it's big. We felt that we must not spread them to different areas. Once they're in one place, it becomes easier for us to handle the pressure, but to counsel them because we've organized our counseling services at Deep Cliff Mortuary so that when you get there you are able to be received 
by the people and help you to identify your loved ones. So we, there is no other mortuary that we've used. But when Deep Kloof is overheating, we'll definitely shift to another mortuary, mortuary, but we'll inform the citizens so that they don't run around when they look for their loved ones. Okay. I, I want to ask you in terms of those that sadly did pass on. Uh, there's been a concern about the fact that so far 10 bodies have been burnt beyond recognition. Uh, is that still the same figure that you understand? Is it still 10? And maybe you can just go a little bit deeper into, you know, what forensics and pathologists are actually dealing with uh, in terms of those that, that have passed on. At the moment, it's still that 10, but I think maybe there will be more. But for now, they said this is the 10 that they are unable to identify it, which are going to use the DNA tests. Because we need, now we need the families now so that those families can come that said their loved ones are here and then we'll do the DNA test. And we've activated the teams there at Hillbrow Hospital so that they will be able to do those DNA tests here in our mortuary that is next to Hillbrow Hospital. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you in terms of those that were injured, can you speak to us about any serious injuries, so people in ICU, people that uh, are, are really critical at this point? At Bara we have four that are critical, that are seriously injured. They went to under the knife yesterday in the evening, so I'm sure they are better now because I, here in the prayer there was one of the colleagues who is a doctor that is observing them. Even now she's going back to hospital to observe them. She was telling me that those that are critical, they were out of the theater yesterday evening, but now they are in the world, so they are taking care of them, although they are still critical. At Charlotte McClellan, we have those that are critical too, but there are those that are critical but stable at the same time. Even those, uh, we, are, we have hope, there may be one or two that will stay, maybe it will be very difficult, or it will take, it will take time to recover. But the other age, uh, Helen Joseph, we do have five that is critical, that has been uh, taken to the wards now because they are in a high care. So those are the other ones. Uh, in other hospitals, they are not mine. They are minor now treatments that they are doing in South Rand and in Tembisa. But these three hospitals, they, there is so much that we, we need to pray for those because it, it, it's scary. The environment is scary, but we don't want to threaten the families. Yeah, okay. to make them feel bad. Yeah. Sure. I just lastly want to ask you in terms of um, the cause of death for some. Was 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 some. Uh, did some tragically pass because of smoke inhalation? Are you able to decipher that at this yes, point? Some is the smoke, uh, it is the smoke and, uh, uh, inhalation because they've inhaled and they were treated on that. But some, it's, the, it's when they were jumping in this tall building that I'm looking at from the fifth floor, some of them. Because the one was telling me in the hospital that there was a gentleman that put a truss downstairs and then they were saying, throw yourself to that truss, my truss. So if you go down from the fifth floor to the mattress, definitely you are break, going to break some of your, your bones. So that's the reason some of them are critical. Even the ones mostly that are critical are those that have jumped through the building. But we didn't see them when even the EMS guys, they were saying when they arrived, they didn't see them. But they throw themselves through the windows here. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, MEC. We appreciate you. your time and all your efforts. I know it's quite a stressful time, but thank you so, <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate your time. That is uh, the MEC for Health, uh, Nomanto Ngomo Ralehoko, uh, speaking to us about uh, the the updates around those that have been injured, those that are in hospital, and those that have sadly uh, perished. Uh, it's really a tragic incident. I was actually speaking to the MEC off air, and she was telling me that you know, they don't want to cause panic, but they are very worried about those that are in critical condition. She even said it now on ENCA that, uh, you know, those that are, they are in ICU, um, and some of them even had to go to theatre. So uh, we're just hoping for the best in terms of the recovery of those that have been injured. All right, Heidi Jokos live for us in the Johannesburg CBD, particularly in Marshalltown. Let's leave it there for now.